Hello, welcome to AP Physics 1 Rotation Part 1. This unit is in my opinion the toughest unit, so we'll be taking it slow over multiple videos. We'll be going over all the conversions and proofs of each angular element. There's a lot, so definitely try to strap in. So to begin, let's go over rotational motion as a whole. Rotational motion is any motion that happens around a circular path or a fixed orbit. Now this means that a lot of the units and equations we saw in a linear world transfer over to the rotational one too. I'll also be referring to this part of the circle as the starting point and moving in a counterclockwise direction as the positive and the other way as negative. This is also how most AP tests will do it too. From now on, the regular linear stuff we learned before is called the linear world and the rotational new stuff is called the angular world. Now that we have that established, let's focus on the displacement on a circle. We have two elements to worry about here, the theta, always measured in radians, and the radius, which is the distance from the middle. In the angular world, the theta is position, and angular displacement, all we have to do is to subtract the final theta by the initial. That's all position is in the angular world. However, what if we multiply theta and the radius? Well, that gives us the arc length. Well, so what? But if we unfurl this circle into a straight line, the arc length is actually the distance from one point along the line to the other, which is very similar to the linear displacement we've been learning before. So arc length on this circle is the same as displacement on a line, and this is the first relation. So arc length on a circle is the same as linear displacement, while theta is the angular displacement. This creates the equation s equals r times theta. s is the linear displacement, r is the radius, and theta is the angular displacement. And this gives us our first relation equation. It's good to note that the relation equation is used if you need to convert things into either the angular or linear world. But if you're only going to stay in one, you only need to use the angular equation. In this case, being final theta minus initial theta. Now let's apply this similar logic to angular velocity. Angular velocity symbol is a lowercase omega, which looks sort of like a w. Angular velocity is theta divided by time, very similar to the linear velocity formula of displacement divided by time. This means we can replace linear displacement with the angular displacement just now, and we see that theta divided by time equals angular velocity. This just leaves the radius out and so is multiplied giving us v equals r omega, which is exactly the same form as the displacement formula from earlier. Now moving on to angular acceleration, we can apply the exact same proof, and it comes out the exact same way. Angular acceleration symbol is alpha. Now guess what the acceleration conversion formula is? That's right, it's a equals r times alpha, exact same thing. And the angular acceleration formula without the linear acceleration is going to come out as omega divided by time. Now with angular acceleration, it's important to note that it's not the same as centripetal acceleration. That's the acceleration towards the middle, while angular acceleration is the acceleration tangentially. With these three values, kinematics is now possible, as long as the angular velocity is constant, which is the exact same criteria as linear kinematics. All the values actually directly translate one to one, so if you know linear kinematic equations, you can just replace all of them with their angular correspondence and it will still work perfectly fine. Moving on to force, energy, and momentum, there is one special variable that we still need to address, which is mass. So what is mass in the angular world? Mass is a bit different, since the object is not measured by how hard it is to move in a linear line, and rather how hard it is to move in a rotational sense. The mass in the angular world is called rotational inertia, or moment of inertia. This is indicated by I. So the higher the moment of inertia is, the harder it is to rotate. I'll be going over moment of inertia more in depth later on, but for now just know an object has more rotational inertia if it has more mass, and if the mass is concentrated on the edges compared to the center. Here is a general chart of the different moments of inertia for each shape. There's no need to memorize these, as you'll be given them, but for AP Physics C takers, there will be a question where you have to prove the rotational inertia through integrals. I'll go over that process in a later video as well.
Now moving on to force, the angular version of force is called torque, indicated by lowercase tau. For this one, the exact same principles as before apply, giving us the formula torque equals radius times force. However, we are still missing one element. If we look at this object, when we push it at certain angles, the torque is not being maximized, as a component of our pushing isn't perpendicular. Now looking at the very extreme, if we push it horizontally, like right towards the center, there is no torque, yet there's a lot of force. So what's going on here? We have to add sine theta to the end of the equation to isolate the component that is pushing perpendicularly to the rotation. If we push perpendicularly, it will be sine pi over 2, which equals 1. And if we push horizontally, it will be sine of 0 which is zero. The final formula now being torque equals force times radius times sine theta. Now for the pure rotational torque equation, that comes out to be exactly the same as F equals MA, now being torque equals I alpha. Now for energy, gravitational potential energy will remain the same here. You don't use it too much other than this very specific rolling ball question that I'll cover in the next video. For now, the only one thing to focus on is kinetic energy, and is a direct translation. 1 half mv squared to 1 half i omega squared. Exact same thing. There's no need to transfer energies since you would list them separately anyways on an e equation, so there's no conversion equation. Similarly, work and power are direct translations as well. Work would be torque times theta, similar to work, the linear works force times distance and power would be torque times angular velocity, similar to the linear power of force times velocity. Now for the angular momentum indicated by capital L. This actually comes in two forms. If it is twisting, then angular momentum is L equals I omega. If the object is spinning around the point, there is no rotational inertia. Therefore, the angular momentum is L equals R times that linear momentum or RMV. This value actually has special properties that I'll dive more into in depth later though. Now for a brief review, these are all the values in their angular form. I know this was a ton of information, but doing practice problems will make this 10 times easier, I promise. My plan in the next video is just to be a bunch of practice problems with rotational values. So if you're struggling a little, be on the lookout for that video. Hopefully this was a good introduction though. And for the rotational schedule, after the practice problems, I'll be covering moments of inertia first, then more in depth with torque, then imperfect pulleys and the rolling ball problem, and then lastly, angular momentum. Finally, thank you for 200 subscribers. It's crazy how popular these videos are, and I really do appreciate it. Best of luck with your studies, and bye-bye.